So, one last uh, look at the lighting before I start on the painting here. Um, turn these out for a second. There we go. So, I got a little cloudy effect going on here with the lights. And I really changed the insides of the kit. So, my um, A23 battery, I never bothered to look up the ohms of this thing, and it's very low because um, I burnt one out already. And uh, just testing it, it already burnt out, so I mean, it couldn't have been lit for the equivalent of about more than 15 minutes. So, that wasn't going to work. So, I had to go back to the 9 volt, and I had problems fitting it because of the switch and just. There's not much space for it, so I probably should have showed you this before I glued this down, but I cut out a big hunk here of uh, the center to make room for the 9 volt battery. Uh, I did that, and then to get a little bit more light on the bottom here, there's a this is rounded, and so uh, I ground down a bunch of this using a little Dremel sanding drum in the Dremel of course to get a flat surface with the hopes of getting a little bit more light it it worked a little bit I probably should have done a lot more but uh, there we have it I did pull off these lights to do it and then re-glued them with uh, hot glue and um, yeah that's it the last thing I'm gonna do is just add a thin stip strip of styrene right here because there is a bit of light leak a little bit too much for my taste coming out along these sides the um, I never mentioned the these holes are where the um, people prisoner cages attach, and I'm actually not covering these up. First of all, I'm not attaching the cages just because I don't like the looks. Secondly, I'm leaving the holes because there are actually holes, um, light holes on the the original ship model, Martian tripod, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to leave these. Um, so a little, just a little bit of light comes through. And actually, just as I'm talking, all these little holes here, because there is a row of lights. I thought it was down the sides. Maybe it is down the center. Um, I might drill these out. Uh, it won't have a whole bunch of light coming out, but it'll, it'll just have a little bit. I wonder, yeah, I can still do that and hopefully not butcher my wires. That is a good idea. So I'm going to drill these out, add a strip of styrene here, and then uh, hopefully you'll see this thing painted. All right, there you go. Look, it's all done. Isn't it wonderful? Okay, well, it's not all done. But I did get the uh, main color painted. I uh, went with a mix of uh, Vallejo Air Colors, 50-50 mix of steel and gunmetal, and airbrushed that all over. And then on here, uh, I painted it with uh, some chrome, Vallejo chrome, and then I brushed a little bit of um, just straight gunmetal onto these pieces here. Uh, it's too lazy to mask all that off and airbrush it. And I did get the arms on. I think I forgot to mention that at some point. And also, the lights in the bottom here, I ended up with going with fiber optics just because I had would have had to add like three lights to get uh, an equal spread because these holes are rather deep so I just added fiber optics and one extra light inside here so working on the washes now um, originally I had the idea of painting this uh, sort of a brownish hue um, there's a color in the testers uh, metalizer range I think it's uh, jet exhaust that has like a, a burnt like a burnt iron look to it. That's what I wanted, but <clears throat> rather than painting this that color, I decided to go with silver and then um, use some washes to come up with something like that. So I got my MIG colors here. I tested out a few. Uh, the earth wash gives it a nice look of what I, I want. It's uh, not dark enough though, so what I'm going to do is mix in a little bit of the brown here um, to the earth and coat the whole model and wipe it off with a t-shirt and some odorless thinner which 
you've seen many times before and that will give us some color and some shading and then um, that will be just the first step of the washes I'll go back and do a couple more with some dark dark wash as well but uh, I need to get started on this this whole process is going to take a couple days so going through uh, with the washes now the um, the earth wash I use give a nice tone to it but just not enough shade so I went over again with the um, the dark wash the old standard and now I'll try to take it off this has been drying for a couple days so this is really dried and um, mainly just using a q-tip and I'm leaving the wash in the recesses here I'm not trying to wipe it all off and it's a slow process um, but it is adding the amount of shade that I wanted the hard part is um, I probably should have left most of these bits off before uh, doing all this because you know I obviously already lost an arm there is trying to do the rubbing to get the wash off is uh, and all these delicate bits is a bit difficult but uh, yeah slow process but it is coming out the way I want it is adding a decent amount of shade and my hand's sticky now because I touched the wash but hopefully this is going to be enough because if I, if I have to do another wash uh, of a different color or to darken it a bit more it's uh, I'm going to be annoyed because this is slow going but it's coming out so one last thing and I can call it quits on the paint job here um, painted with my Vallejo model air colors and then I was contemplating putting a, a dull coat over it and I did go with a dull coat um, and what I did is I mixed just a very tiny tiny hint of um, purple ink in with the uh, dull coat and so I gave it a very slight hue which actually it makes it kind of funky uh, where the light hits it, I don't know if this comes out on camera, but where the light hits it, you can't see it. But when the shade, there's a little bit of shade, the purple comes out. So I'm not sure if that comes out. I can't tell if that comes out on the camera or not. Um, ended up with a little bit more purple on this part. So maybe you can see that. But it gives it a nice, unusual look what you would expect from some alien metal. Uh, one last thing I'm doing is I want a bit more weathering uh, just on the hood. And uh, the last scene in the movie you can see the uh, the tripods are really weathered from rain and dirt and what have you. So I'm adding some rain streaks to the hood part here and I got some MIG pigment, some European, excuse me, some industrial city dirt mixed with just a little bit of water. And so I'm going to just do some lines I'm trying to keep it out of the recesses going down the side here I'm making them a bit too too even here let me spread that out a bit and I'm going to let this dry and then rub it away with a cotton swab And hopefully this will give me a little bit more weathering effect going on. And the good thing about the pigments, mixed with just water, is that uh, if I don't like it, I could uh, just wipe it all away. So if this doesn't work, I can redo it. So, um, did the weathering with the pigments actually I ended up taking a lot more of it off I was gonna leave streaks but I wasn't liking the look so did a quite a bit of rubbing it off just leaving it in the recesses um, and I'm happy with with the way it is and that means that I am done with uh, the figure here now I gotta work on the base uh, but one final look here you know can't see much with the lights on There we go. Oh, I gotta put the uh, lenses in the uh, the lights. Forgot about that. And let's put.
put her all together. I'm probably not going to glue it at the moment because I know I'm going to knock it over and break everything up. But there we go. There is our completed war walker. It's picking up some uh, little worms there. That's because of the uh, compact fluorescent lights I got in the other part of the room. It does give it a funky look. So, uh, get this moved out of the way. Now, second phase of the build is the base. I have a oh, reach stretch. I have here, this is an eight inch pine wood base, five bucks from a local craft store, a little warped, but uh, it is okay, satisfactory. I had, ah, here they are. So my plan was to use N scale train stuff for the base. Because uh, end scale in trains works out to be somewhere around 150, 160, 160 scale, and the kit is 144. So these were going to be pretty close. And the idea was I got these awesome, awesome buildings from Japan from a company called Green Max. These are super cool. Look what you can build with them. And this kit, you get six different buildings. Um, you get a decal sheet, a clear sheet for the windows. You get little uh, colored things on the back, air conditioners that you can cut out. Uh, and these things are just so cool. So I got these and they're all styrene uh, plastic. And you can chop them up a little bit and make you know one giant building out of them. Um, even have little apartment blocks and uh, stores. Very, very cool couldn't find anything in the American market that came close to these things. So I got these and I got a bunch of other um, suburban accessories and I was gonna have like a row of houses um, like sort of like this and then the war walker stepping over them but I wasn't feeling it. It wasn't it wasn't working out um, so I'm scrapping the whole thing which makes me really depressed because A I already spent a lot of money getting pieces together and B, I really wanted to use these things because they are really cool. But I'm going to up the scale a little bit. Um, haven't got it yet. I'm still looking around, checking out the market. What I'm going to build is something a little bit closer than to what um, was a scene in the movie. This thing, I, that's part of the reason why I wasn't, it wasn't working with me. This, I was creating a different scene, not the scene in the movie, and I just I wasn't feeling it. It wasn't working out, out right. So instead, I'm going to up the scale a bit, go to uh, host, uh, HO scale models um, scale, which is one, oh, what is the scale of HO? Uh, I want to say it's one one hundred. might be a little bit bigger, but the buildings are larger. Um, and what I want to do is the scene in the, the farmhouse where they like to hide for a month or whatever. I'm going to have the farmhouse in the center here. Um, and do more of that red vine plant thing that they're growing in the movie and then have the have the, the uh, tripod straddling the house over the house and it will it'll look better it fits more into the theme with the tripod if you have an alien vehicle with an alien base it'll flow better it will look better it makes more sense together and then the farmhouse will be roughly the same that was in the movie. So I'm, I'm creating a scene now rather than taking a vehicle and sticking it on a, uh, a base which really doesn't match it. It wasn't working. So that is the plan. I've got to find parts. Um, hopefully in the next video, video you'll see a little bit more progress in the base here because I was really hoping to get this project done soon and now it's it's not happening. I gotta wait. I gotta find parts and uh, a few other things and I got to see if I can return what I already bought so next video move on to the base